say welcome to everybody to this session. Um, we are um, we are all from the Open University, um, and we're here to um, tell you a little bit today about our um, mentoring scheme that we've been running at the Open University for our students. So I just want to start briefly and tell you a little bit about Open University. You've probably heard of us. Uh, no doubt, but you might not know that we are the UK's largest university with the most students. Um, we have um, in our, just in our computing and IT um, area, um, we have probably the largest amount of female students for any university. We have over 700 women each year who are in our uh, computing degrees joining each year. Um, and they are enrolled in our, um, our uh, BSc uh, Computing and IT degrees or Joint Honours degrees. All of our students are uh, enrolled part-time in distance learning. Uh, most of them are working whilst they study. And actually, for a lot of our students, they are career changers. Or, um, so a lot of them working maybe in other industries and wanting to go into IT or they're working in the IT sector and wanting to upskill and move up into uh, different roles. So it's very focused, I think, for, for many of our students. The focus is very much on uh, the work uh, that they want and the industry that they want to go and work into. So uh, we did a project a few years ago where we, were look, we, we asked our students, our women students in particular, because we knew, obviously, this, that uh, across the industry, there is a, a big gender imbalance, um, and we we asked our students how can we help them, what kinds of things would help them in supporting them into employment and improving their careers. And one of the things that um, we found out through our focus groups was the um, women. Uh, showed us that they wanted to, or told us that they wanted to support with their career development. Uh, and this led us to thinking about setting up a mentoring scheme. Um, what, what they wanted was some inside info about careers in IT, what's it like working in the sector, and how do you get yourself in and move on in those jobs. So uh, we set up a mentoring scheme. This was part of the Institute of Coding, uh, one of the projects that we've been running. And um, I will then hand over to Elaine Thomas, my colleague, who uh, will tell you a bit more about that because she was the one that uh, set this up and set it going. Um, I'll just do a quick introduction to my colleagues on screen. I don't know whether people viewing can see all, all four of us, but uh, my name is and I can't see if you can see my name, so apologies for that. My name's Clem Herman. I'm Professor of Gender and Technology in the Computing and Communications Department at the OU. Um, Soraya, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Uh, yes, sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Soraya Quadri, senior lecturer in, in uh, what technology is in the same in the school as Clem. It's the School of Computing and Communications in the OU. Over to you. Over to you, Elaine. Elaine, if you just introduce yourself and then we'll introduce Katuta as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm Elaine Thomas and I'm, uh, I, I work Open University. Um, I'm a senior lecturer, but also a staff tutor. So I have, I have a lot to do with students and with the tutors. And I was uh, sort of kind of acting as the, the lead for setting up the uh, mentoring project uh, there. Okay, um, pass over to, to Katuta now. Hi, I'm Katuta Lum. I'm a mentor on the um, industry mentorship program where I was for the Open University. Can I, I think we have uh, one question. Uh, uh, the the uh, FUNASA is there. Uh, FUNASA is there. Also, oh, okay. 
Um, Vanessa, um, I can't see you on the screen. I don't know whether we are able to. Um, I can only see set four. Um, ah, ah, right, here you ah, go. There. Hi. Okay. Hi. 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 Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Right. So, do you want to give us a quick intro? We've just, I don't know if you were watching from the beginning, but we've just done a quick introduction to everybody. So, do you want to just say a quick hello? You're one of our students. Yes, so of course. Of course. Yes. Perfect. So, my Perfect. So, my name is Fernanda. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 we're we try to focus on what I'm saying, uh, but basically, um, I am a former student. I graduated in December uh, with the Open University in uh, computing and IT, and I've been mentored for a few months uh, by someone that's also an, al an alumni as so and someone that's also a career changer, of course. So I will be sharing a few words later on about my experience of mentoring. Excellent. Thank you and welcome. So, uh, Elaine, would you like to uh, continue and just tell us a little bit and outline a bit about the actual um, uh, mentoring scheme? Uh, and then we'll move on to hear experiences from Katuta, who, as a mentor, and uh, Juan as uh, a, a mentee, and then open up for right. questions or discussion. Okay, over to you, Elaine. Okay, thank, thank you, Claire, and thanks for the opportunity to talk about the scheme. Uh, that was set up. Um, you know, we, we're based in the School of Computing Elaine, Communication. Sorry, I, can't, I can't actually hear you. I don't know. Can everybody else hear? It might just be my. Yeah, we can hear her. Can, yeah. yes. Okay, I will just adjust my settings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, well, hopefully everybody can hear me. I, we don't seem to have a comments yes. box, or do we? Just as if anyone can see there. So we, but we have a comment box, and everyone is hearing. I think Elaine. Okay, right, yeah. dead on. Okay, so I'm, as I said, I'm from the School of Communications, and you know, as one of the uh, things we do, obviously, is we've been involved in Athena Swan, and we got the Bronze Award a couple of years ago. I think it's 2016, and one of the outcomes then we decided, you know, based on the work being sort of, of you know, how females progressing was to set up a, a sort of mentoring scheme um you know I, I mean i know from personal experience that you know just trying to get into the computing and it industries is not that easy if you're not really 100 percent sure about what the different jobs entailed and what skills are you tend to I think sort of to lack the confidence to kind of sort of put yourself forward and say well look i have this this and this i'm sure i could do this job <laughs> there so and it was really important for us i think that to try to kind of make these links between uh, sort of our students and industry also and people who had first-hand experience of working there and uh, quite a lot of them actually eventually came from amongst our alumni. So we aim to recruit 20 students uh, from our third level modules, 20 female students, I should say. Um, and then we were planning to match them with uh, mentors, mainly from amongst our alumni, although, as explained later, that didn't actually work out that way. So uh, we kind of approached different mo module team chairs and we had to go through quite a process to even sort of get students that we could invite them and we have about seven or eight modules um, at level three but by the time we got to uh, sort of the third or or the fourth module we had as had our 20 students and then we had to kind of set about recruiting the, the mentors so mainly the, the students were studying the uh, uh, either single honours in computing IT or the joint honours or a uh, broad STEM degree. And I would say people from all backgrounds, all ages, um, you know, our students vary. M many of them, most of them are actually returners. Although we have increasing number of younger students, they tend to be sort of um, sort of late 20s going on and on and on up, upwards there to you know, some in their 70s of studying with with us. So um, we originally planned, as I said, to recruit from solely amongst our alumni, and we did. We 
recruited five or six uh, uh, mentors from amongst our alumni because we knew that they would have the experience of uh, you know, being students as well. But then we found that we just could not recruit enough for the students that we had. So we broadened the net out and we had some really good uh, so applications from people uh, that we uh, made connections through our industry partnership board and through uh, sort of the, the social media links that, that we have. So, um, you know, the pilot started in September, but we were doing our recruitment over the previous summer. And, um, you know, it's, it's important to say that this participation was entirely, on, entirely a, on a voluntary basis. And sorry, there's a lot of feedback. <laughs> um, um, so, we had a project it's consultant who was Geraldine Doyle and uh, she was the person who did the matching between the mentors and the mentees. So we got both the mentors and mentees to produce this little potted biographies to say, you know, what the, what they were they were doing and where they want what sort of things that they were looking for in a, in the men in a mentor, what they wanted mentoring in, and where you know what they where they actually wanted to go is part of the process. Um, you know, and so Geraldine Doyle, our consultant, was there and she did the matching and she also did the initial uh, training sessions. And uh, we, it was all kind of just done on a voluntary basis. We used also a um, an open learn training uh, uh, package, I suppose you call a course, which is uh, called uh, Open Learn Exploring Career Mentoring and Coaching. And this was to provide, you know, some kind of framework for us to work in. And we encouraged our mentors and mentees to sort of to read through this and sort of to, to study it if possible. We also had a session where we invited careers uh, from the Open University to come along to one of the briefing sessions so that uh, uh, for the mentees this was so that they uh, could uh, get a chance to meet mentors and also that meant that you know that people were aware of each other because not all students know that the career service exists and that there's a range of support that they can get from uh, from careers from within the university so uh, we thought that was important so we, we can progress with this 15 mentees and about 11 mentors and uh, some um, mentors took on more than one mentee. And there's great variation now in how these worked out. I mean, some were tremendously successful, others not so, and sort of all stages in between. So, so what or two that didn't even actually get off the ground. Um, I think we, we found out, you know, that people have all kinds of reasons for op offering to mentor. And so we hope that Katuta can sort of shed some in, some insights there. And also Funasa, so one of our very, very enthusiastic uh, mentees. So we kind of know that it has been successful in, 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 in many ways, but we just could not sort of accommodate every single person for what the, in their particular needs. And that's partly just because we have such a huge variation students um, uh, that you know take up our degrees so we've issued uh, digital badges from the Institute of Coding that uh, people can use in their social media profiles and as part part of the you know sort of their sort of self-promotion if you like um, and you know so I think I'll, I'll just stop there because I think it's more important to hear about uh, you know uh, from uh, Katuta and Funasa about their experiences and that so and I'm just like to say I'm delighted to see see them here today okay so thank you Myself, right? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm remaining on this. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't understand that. <laughs> Sh should I go next? Yeah, 
Okay. Sorry, oh. Sorry Clem. Uh, is it? Could you just speak next? Oh, I, don't know. I think we said to speak. Yeah. 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 Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Katuta Lumpa, and uh, as per the introduction, I'm a mentor on the uh, industry mentorship program for the Open University. I work for Airbus. Um, for those who may not be aware, Airbus manufactures aircrafts, uh, space uh, satellites, defense missiles. The project range is vast. Um, I'm based in Stevenage um, and I work in IT. In IT, I've got two roles. Um, I'm a business relationship manager. Uh, that's the first thing. In that role, I sit in between the uh, business and the technical people. So any IT requirements from the business, uh, I am the focal point uh, for that. So I'll talk to the technical IT specialists and if they, the requirement needs delivering a solution in a project team, I'll manage that uh, project and deliver to the business. <clears throat> My role is found in the UK, Spain, uh, Germany and France. So it's a, it's a wide team spread across Europe. I've got a, another role within the uh, department. Uh, I manage an on-site team of experts who manage some of our applications. We've outsourced some of the low value add applications to an external uh, company and I manage that relationship. Again, that team is part of a wider team, which is spread across uh, UK, France, Germany, and Spain. I've been in IT uh, for 13 years now. I've not always been in IT. I moved from uh, engineering to purchasing, then uh, IT. Uh, in terms of what I've studied in the past, I studied uh, business administration with the Open University, and my first degree was mechanical engineering. I was born in Zambia. I'd never heard of computing when I was coming to England to study mechanical engineering. I found out about computing when I uh, started studying at um, university at Nottingham Trent. And during my industrial placement uh, with TechPro Mining and Metallurgy in Ashford in Kent, I uh, was placed in this department where they were doing several calculations on pieces of paper. I thought to myself, surely there must be an easier way of doing that. I talked to my supervisor and he said, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm just working on a computer program to uh, computerize all of that. Uh, instead of all the 50, 40 sheets of paper that the engineers used to find calculations, we'll be able to do it very quickly on a computer uh, program. So that was really my uh, introduction to computing. Uh, the person I met was able to take me through all the uh, first principles, the steps, and help me really understand computer programming. And from that day onwards, I knew I wanted to uh, work in IT, even though I was doing uh, mechanical engineering. I went back to university, finished my mechanical engineering degree, and started looking for an IT role, but couldn't get into IT. It was difficult. I was being told that I didn't study computing. I didn't have any IT experience. Uh, so I, what I did was I started working as a mechanical engineer, but wherever I worked, I looked for opportunities to help in IT. In the first role that I did, I took over an, a purchasing application that was being maintained by external consultants. We were paying a lot of money to maintain that purchasing uh, system. I took it over internally, saved the company a lot of money. 
when the opportunity came up to implement a huge enterprise resource and planning software system, uh, I volunteered. I didn't know the technology, but I volunteered um, to help uh, with that. <clears throat> and we managed to implement that in a record time of uh, nine months. And I left that company having been in engineering and purchasing and joined Airbus. And immediately when I joined Airbus, I started looking to get into IT. Again, I didn't have the necessary uh, knowledge about the technologies within IT, but I showed an interest. I showed that I was keen. Uh, I volunteered for a lot of things and I was taken on in, into the IT department. And that is the one uh, piece of advice that I would offer someone wanting to move or change career. Um, concentrate on your strengths. Uh, have you done um, any process improvements in the past? Even if it's uh, not IT related, what have you done? Um, volunteer, show um, people uh, who are responsible for the recruitment that you can do it. I was very interested in the um, mentorship uh, program because actually the mentee and I had a lot of similarities that I was mentoring. Uh, she was someone who was working in um, a warehouse and wanting to move into IT, studying like I did. I studied with the Open University whilst working full time. So, and what I concentrate, or what we concentrated on as a team uh, with the mentee on the program was to highlight the strengths. Um, she had done a lot of uh, project management, she had done a lot of process improvements, although um, she felt she didn't have the necessary experience, I was able to um, show or help her see the value in what she already had. She had a lot of strengths. And in IT now, um, there are so many skills that you can draw from and so many skills that uh, employers are looking for. It's not just the technology. Can you speak to people? Um, can you improve processes? There are so many things. And you find also in uh, companies that people come from different backgrounds. And so long as you can speak to people, um, companies are willing to train. It's so much, not so much the technology, but how you interact with people um, and what you can do. Um, so that, that's, that's the main thing. And um, I'd, I'd like to end uh, this by um, a quotation I, I actually saw uh, from Oprah Winfrey. And I'd like to read it for you. It says, the single greatest thing you can do to change your life today would be to start being grateful for what you have right now. And that's what I was saying. Concentrate on your strengths, because from your strengths, uh, you can learn all the other things that you need. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Ketu. That was really in interesting there. So I now I'll hand over to Funa. So if you would like to say, speak about your experiences there. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I will try to keep it, uh, to keep it short. Um, so just to quickly introduce myself. Um, yeah, um, I'm a recent graduate recent, as in uh, since December, I studied computing and IT with the Open University. Um, so I will just try to share a little bit about my experience being mentored. 
Um, and uh, let's just start with my background. So just a few words about it. Um, I initially graduated in business administration, specialized in human resources. That was back in my country uh, in France. Um, after that, that was a long time ago. After that, I started working in recruitment for two years over there, came to England, worked in recruitment for another eight years, this time technical recruitment only, uh, initially in an agency, in a recruitment agency, and later on, I moved internally. So I started recruiting technical talents for technical companies uh, internally. So that was great. I loved it. Um, but let's say that the longer I spent talking to people about problems, solving and talking to people I was trying to hire about the kind of problems they were solving, the more I started seeing problems around me in recruitment. Um, and obviously, the more you start thinking about it, the more you start thinking about how you could potentially solve it. So that's how I looked into learning uh, to code. So I initially started my degree because I wanted to um, learn enough about coding in order to make my job a little bit easier, let's say, or faster, or at least to get rid of the part of my work or the, the least interesting part of my work, let's say. So that's how I started. Uh, so that was in 2015. Um, initially, I did that uh, part time and I was uh, working full time to pay for my studies, but working part time. And about two years later, in 2017, that's where I figured that um, I kind of had to it was hard to carry on doing both at the same time, so I completely stopped recruitment and then I focused on finishing my degree a little bit uh, sooner than planned. So that's what I've been doing. Um, now about the program, um, if I remember well, that was um, mid-summer last year that I got contacted by Elaine and Geraldine. So they emailed me, they started sharing a bit of information about the program, what was its purpose, um, how many people were potentially concerned and so on, what it would look like. Uh, I started thinking about it for a few days and over the following months we had a few meetings, emails back and forth and that gave them enough time to start understanding a little bit more about um, our professional goals as potential mentees. Um, then we started asking a little bit more about what we could potentially gain from that. And uh, that was in October last year that I got introduced to my mentor. So uh, I think at some point we had to express interest uh, and also highlight what kind of mentor we would like to have. Um, my list was very, very, very specific. I was looking for something that was, uh, that was a little bit unrealistic. Um, in the end, I got paired up with a mentor that was absolutely excellent. So my mentor was uh, someone that moved from uh, quality control in manufacturing to a software engineering position in C++ at four. So that's something quite hard to do. Uh, he was uh, a very energetic Italian man, very passionate, very, very lively. Um, and um, even though at the beginning I was a little bit skeptical about the match because I'm, I'm all about Java or let's say that's, that's my main language. But at the end of the day, I was still paired up with someone that was kind of close to me uh, age wise because I'm 36 and someone that also had to struggle with that and someone that was, which was the most important for me, someone that was still 100% hands on, someone that was working as a software engineer, not 10 years ago, not five years ago, but someone that studied with the Open University University, did the hard job hunting thing and ended up uh, achieving his goal. So that's how it started. Um, we had the first interactions in October. And um, before to start collaborating with him, I was two months job hunting on my own. So initially, I was just doing exactly the same things and most new grads, I would just go for the applying to large companies and just sending my profile, trying to be considered for uh, very standard uh, graduate schemes. So that's what I was doing. I wasn't really impressed with that. So when we started collaborating, what we decided to do was to agree on how we would be collaborating. So uh, because I was keeping track of my applications from the very, very beginning, uh, which was mainly the name of the companies and whether they were re rejecting me or not, uh, we decided to extend that. So what we did was that we started keeping track of the size of the companies I was contacting, when I was contacting them, when they were getting back to me, how they were getting back to me, meaning was it just a 
no. Was it um, an automated email or was it a response, an actual feedback? Did they actually look at my profile or not, or at least the technical part of my profile? And then, uh, and then uh, from there, we agreed to um, have a little bit of a chat for a little bit, well, an hour worth of chat every two weeks. And then we would be reflecting on numbers, trying to put together theories, trying to spot trends, and then we could adjust little by little my, um, my strategy. So that's what we did. Um, I will just first start with a little bit of a disclaimer. There's no happy ending there just yet. <laughs> I kind of uh, decided to put everything on pause in February uh, with the whole COVID situation when I started actually getting a lot of interviews and feedbacks, but also when COVID started, and then I decided to um, kind of move away from job hunting, focus on building something for myself, and I'm really enjoying it right now. So uh, my job hunting is on pause until things get a little bit clearer regarding the pandemic. So that was my little bit of a disclaimer. So going back to collaborating uh, with, um, with my mentor, um, at first, when I was a pro, I didn't necessarily feel like I would get that much from it. The, the reason behind it was because, A, we already have the traditional kind of careers and employability service. So I, I wasn't 100% sold on the thing until I started actually working with him and, and seeing some results there. So that was the first reason. And the second reason was obviously the fact that I've been working in recruitment for 10 years. So I felt like I knew pretty much what I was doing. But yeah, I, I had a lot of surprises there. Um, so first, going back to traditional careers and employability services, that, that's a great thing, um, especially if you're someone that's a career starter, that's absolutely fantastic. But if you're a career changer, the thing is that, especially looking back at what we found out with him, um, the thing is that if you're trying to find a role that would allow you to a, touch your new dream, but at the same time, take away some of the skills you had previously. You necessarily just rely on the one large employer that can hire 15 new grads at the same time. And the reason being is that obviously very often the larger the companies are, the more segmented the roles are. So it's going to be a little bit harder for you if you want to start as a software engineer to still reuse the skills you had from another field. Uh, if I think about the other students I met over the last four years, I met someone that was a truck driver. I met someone that was working in banking, uh, some people working in catering. So if you have to find the employer that would potentially uh, consider having someone that comes with previous skills, you might have to contact quite a lot of employers in order to find enough opportunities to suit how many students there are. So that's very, very complicated. And in the end, you know, looking back at it, I think having a one-to-one -one service is extremely important uh, because obviously what I need and what, what I can take away from my previous, uh, from my previous background is something very different from uh, the other student that lives next door. So that's the very first reason. Second, the person I was paired up with was someone who took a very, very long time finding a new role. It took a very long time because he was extremely picky. Uh, he didn't want to look at anything else than C++, even though he had skills in other programming languages. Therefore, it took him a year to find a role. So bearing that in mind, um, in, in, in one way, I made sure at any point I had a plan A, plan B, plan C. There's my ideal situation, the one that's kind of in between, and then the worst case scenario, which would be to still go back to my previous field, but do that part-time and then part-time work on working on, 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 on building um, um, products myself for recruitment, which is what I'm doing in my spare time right now. But that would be my extreme worst possible scenario. But I always had different scenarios uh, because you never know what's going to happen like a pandemic for example so that was the first thing and the second thing was that um that helped me realize that being super super picky was also very dangerous because not everyone can take a year uh, uh before to actually accessing to these next steps they want to access to important to bear in mind that sometimes there's not exactly what you want at first, but you might have a stepping stone there that's available. And he helped me realize that. He was at every single stage making sure that I, I 
I was aware of other roles that were also out there that could potentially be interesting for me or as a stepping stone or as some sort of compromise. So that was one thing. Um, and also actually having someone that was a mentor working in the industry rather than someone that was not, or someone that was in a managerial kind of position. That's why it was really helpful because I had someone with up-to-date information about the market. What I mean by that is just going back to uh, what Katula was saying earlier, um, because things have changed so much over the last 20, 30 years in tech, there's so many roles out there that are not the traditional QA, developer, network engineer type of role. Some roles that are kind of in between, you know, that very often I don't think universities always know about all of these roles because it changes so fast. So having someone that's still on the market, in the market, that is still co connecting with people on a daily basis is really helpful because very often he was talking to me and just going for NASA, I know you really want that role on Java, but please bear in mind that maybe you could consider talking about people uh, that might be looking for, I don't know, a solution engineer which your, your, your previous experience in stakeholder management or whatnot could be very, very helpful. So please bear that in mind, you know, stop being so stubborn. So that was something really helpful to have someone to just, you know, shake you up a little bit from time to time. Um, also, I would say that, um, yeah, it might be a little bit more sensitive to talk about that, but I think that's also important. I'm not just um, the, the, the traditional kind of new grad you see out there. I'm someone that's 36 years old, uh, I'm a, a woman, and I'm coming from a very different field. So obviously, whatever the law says, at the end of the day, when people see my profile, they make a lot of assumptions about it. They make a lot of assumptions. And being paired up with someone that was my mentor, um, because we were talking often, it became very close, but at the same time, because he wasn't a part of the university, I was comfortable enough to talk to him about very sensitive topics. Um, he wasn't shy totally fine with it uh, because he was a straight talking person anyways, and because he went through that himself. So we had a few sessions that us listing up all the possible, all the wildest and all the the most depressing, let's say, negative assumptions people could have about me because they exist. That's a fact. People will make assumptions about me. We listed them out and then we started working on how we could make sure we were getting them out of the way because that's important. If people think that because of my age uh, or because I'm a woman, so potentially we'll get pregnant or this or that, if people start making these assumptions, we might have to try to find ways to reassure them that's that's something that was really helpful i didn't think it was so important but it was um i might be someone that's not 20 years old but i'm very mobile i've been working in other countries for most of my career a few days a year so that's not something that's a problem to me but not have realized at the very beginning that it was important to make that available on my cv or other things such as people assuming that I might be more expensive than other new grads because I came from a very different field and, and I had a bit of experience. It, there's, for example, when you apply on a role, there's that little box that I probably spent 10 years never filling up because I've always worked for the same type of companies on the same type of roles. Everyone knows how much you pay a technical recruiter. So I never really paid attention to this box, but now it's something that I need to do. And these little things that you don't necessarily think about or um, trying to make sure that you you sound as humble as possible and open-minded as possible on your cover letter. Um, cover letter is not something I was necessarily doing before. Now I'm doing it, but that made a lot of difference. It made a very, very big difference and I started getting a lot more feedbacks. I started getting a lot more questions. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, yes that you get straight away, but at least you start having more people you know, interested in what you're doing, why you're making this change, why it's such a drastic change, why it's so important to you, and so on. And then I started having more conversations with people. So, conversations were possible because my mentor was not a part of my university. So, he was comfortable talking about it. It wasn't necessarily risking much doing it, and they are a part of who I am. So, they needed to be addressed. So, that was awesome. I really. And I think uh, one of the things 
what was uh, the, the most helpful was also the fact that I was talking to someone who had a year worth of experience job hunting. Once again, that's because he was picky, but he had a year worth of experience. So when we were looking into numbers, he was making, um, how can I say, he was coming up with theories I wasn't necessarily thinking of. Uh, and little by little, with time, after collaborating for five months, we found out a few things. We found out, for example, that I was a lot quicker from smaller companies than larger companies. So that's something we could adjust. I could try to spend less people, less people, less time applying to these larger companies. Uh, because, yeah, if you think about it very often, as a recruiter, you might be looking at a profile and you might have to hire, I don't know, 20 people or 25 people within the course of six months, something like that. Um, you might be used to trying to spot patterns and you're trying to spot the pattern you're used to, right? So if you come up with a CV that's completely different, and if you work in a company where you're so remote from the teams you're actually hiring for, well, you're less likely to take that CV and go to the team and say, look, that's what I have. What do you think about that? So that's something we started working on more and more. And I started redirecting things and contacting more and more smaller businesses. Then I started getting a lot more feedback because obviously the smaller the business is, the less volume recruitment there might be. So maybe recruiters have a little bit more time to take your CV and think, hmm, okay, hold on a minute, I'm going to talk to someone about it. And then the persons they might be talking to about might be a CEO or a technical person. If that's a technical person, who you are will not matter that much. What you can do might matter a little bit more. And if that person is a CEO, they might think a little bit you know, uh, differently. Okay, that person is a technical person, but that person has been, as Katula was saying before, for example, doing some process improvement, or that person has been a training of a people, or that person was a teacher. You know, that's the kind of things that they might be thinking of. So that allowed me to readjust, let's say, my target and focus on slightly different type of companies. Um, and little by little, I started having a lot more, a lot more feedbacks, and so on. So I would say that's most of what I gained from having a mentor and having a mentor that, let's say, achieved these dreams and was doing something that sounded pretty much impossible at the very beginning. Um, so, yeah, I think I will leave it to someone else because I went a little bit too far there. I'm muting myself. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really, really interesting. And thank you, everybody, for your contributions. Um, I wondered whether we could open up and see if anybody's got any questions, uh, because I've noticed there's quite a lot of uh, discussions going on in the in the chat box. Don't know if you can see those. Um, I I think um, has, does anybody want to ask a question? I don't I, I don't think you can actually chip in and speak, but maybe you could post the question on the chat box if somebody's got anything they'd like to ask either, um, well, any of our speakers, really. Um, so, ah, right, it's a couple of people speaking about um, their own experiences of applying for smaller companies. Um, let's have a look if there's anything else. Any questions? Um, well, Elaine, maybe uh, maybe you could say something about um, the mentoring scheme and whether we um, how we're going to go forward with that. Would you like to comment on that or any learning that we're doing from it? Mm. Okay. Ah, right. Somebody is saying that Scott, here we go. Um, Evie says, um, I'm enrolled in a conversion MSc, um, looking for graduate opportunities, uh, but most of them require you to have a full bachelor's. How might you get past this hurdle? Um, do all companies require the three-year computer science degree? I think this is a really interesting question because um, this sort of comes to the heart of 
recruitment in the IT sector, um, to what extent are, um, are recruiters and companies looking for particular qualifications or is there, um, um, how, how easy is it to get into that kind of recruitment cycle if you don't have a very clear, if you don't have um, a traditional um, uh, computer science degree? Does anybody want to comment on that? Sorry, I, I kind of want to say one or two things on that. Um, so, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. So first thing, um, from, from my experience working in recruitment, there's one thing that I remember, which is the fact that I think past a certain uh, stage, whether you have a degree or not, does not matter. Meaning that uh, five companies I worked for, if you were to be someone with some coding experience that built something absurd or something very impactful or something used by loads of people of or of a very high quality, you have a computer science, computer science degree, does not matter. So long as you are able to code using languages that are relevant to them. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. And the second thing, which is that um, even though I took the road, which was to um, sponsor my own traditional, nowadays, like there's loads of apprenticeships out there and you don't necessarily already have this degree and you don't necessarily need to spend three years or four years on this degree and later on to start. Loads of universities have partnerships nowadays with companies. If you, um, let's say, flexible regarding companies, you can just go to a company, well, go to a company, it is not as easy as that, but you can apply to these kind of schemes that allow you to A, have a degree and B, work for these companies, or just work for these companies without having a degree. I fully agree with uh, what you've just said. Um, as I said, in my experience as well, I didn't have a computing degree, but I'd uh, done several different projects uh, in uh, previous roles. And also uh, the big thing is I, I showed an interest and also I was willing to learn. The other thing is a willingness to learn. Some of the uh, software programs that we have where uh, we work, because it's such a large organization, the small and medium companies won't necessarily have. So what we look for as recruiting uh, managers is someone who can come in and work with other people and also learn, learn the skills. Yeah, so I, I think that's the most important thing, the willingness to learn and also your strengths as well. Yeah. And also uh, w one more thing there, um, I think as, uh, Funasa uh, said, um, there are many different roles now in IT. So you could also, if you really wanted to get into IT, you could have a stepping stone, say get into one role, then move to where you want to go because it's easier to move once you're in. So yeah, that, that was a very good point I just wanted to add on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's very insightful and um, obviously, at the Open University, we're you know we're we're keen on getting people to um, our business is to um, and our our mission is to help um, people qualify with with uh, qualifications, both degree programs, but also we have a whole mix of shorter courses as well um, to upskill um, th either through our Open Learn offers or through other shorter qualifications so uh, a degree may be something as you say maybe um, a target for individuals but we also for example run an apprenticeship uh, a degree apprenticeship program so if anybody wants to work whilst they're whilst they're studying um, this is you know an excellent route and I know a lot of the IOC uh, universities also have those uh, offers so I think this is definitely um something that's really important within the um within the digital skills arena um there was um 
and and this obviously gives you the opportunity to have experience plus qualifications which again as as our speakers have, have alluded to that's often what um, uh, employers are, are looking for as well um somebody else asked a question about relevant languages computer languages uh, i think this is a really interesting question um some people you know python seems to be flavor of the month at the moment for especially for entry level um uh, students or people wanting to come into the industry um uh, and there's so many of kind of short courses and programs around what do does anyone have an opinion as to uh, whether that's appropriate or whether um, what might be um, what? Yeah, any views on that particular point? Is is Python the answer to our dreams? Do, do someone want to take the question, or should I maybe just uh, say a word? Yeah, uh, I, I don't think, well, yes, I uh, fully agree it's the flavor of the month or flavor of the year <laughs> or the decade, but uh, I think it, it's, it's not about uh, one particular language, it's about the, the skills that you learn. Uh, so, I mean, um, obviously, I mean, uh, there's the whole problem solving and coding skills that you learn through a language, but you, you, you've got to be open. Uh, to uh, to other um, to other languages or other skills. Um, so just ten years ago, it was all about Java. Uh, it was a whole new word, object oriented, and everyone was talking about it. Now it's data science and Python. In five years, it may be uh, something completely new. So uh, by learning the, the the skills, the programming skills um, needed to solve problems, uh, you should be able to adapt to any um, any sort of languages agree python is something that you should be aware of but uh, you've got to be flexible and open to learn other languages thank you yeah and uh, as kirsty has said of course that is <laughs> part of our open university degree you will uh, definitely get the opportunity to learn python but um will <laughs> Yeah, and I think uh, um, um, a question Elena asks, is it better to have um, familiarity in several languages? Um, I think, you know, again, the, the question there is, um, or, or perhaps the, the, the way to think about this is that, uh, and, and those of you who speak more than one language, mm -hmm. as in language <laughs> will know that once you learn one language uh, uh, and a language and an additional language uh learning the third fourth or fifth language be easier starts to get a bit easier you know um I mean, and, as, as long know, as you so have I, you speak you speak several languages yourself you know and I think <laughs> yeah it started, uh, started as yeah uh, because my uh, mother tongue we do french in parallel and i kind of convert it to english uh tried other languages but i'm not that <laughs> but uh, I mean, in terms of programming, uh, it's it's obviously always a plus to uh, uh, to know more than one language, um, and it's usually the case that when 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 a student starts with Python, would be competent maybe in one language, but knows and would able to to adapt to other languages because the basics and the uh, the the reasoning behind the the compilers um, that build our languages are almost the same so uh, so it's all about the skills that you that you that you 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 build as you start learning those i mean when you see a cv with only one one programming language and you see another one with more than one you definitely naturally um uh, kind of lean towards the one with more languages okay uh thank you for that um I'm I'm aware that we've we've only we've only got a few more minutes actually the time five gone minutes quickly, maybe five minutes so um, I wondered whether uh, we want to have just a sort of round up comments um, um, sort of for 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 all the speakers so maybe Elaine I don't know if you want to say something briefly about 
um, your sort of perspective on the mentoring scheme and and where that might go and any advice to others who either are um, I don't know who's watching but whether there are other kind of uh, universities or indeed come people from companies who might be um, uh, offer some some words of advice on that and then we'll ask Katuta and Fanasa to to give us a sort of final comments as well so Elaine do you want to say something your mic is is muted Elaine please un unmute your mic Elaine We can't hear you, Elaine. Um, sorry, we can't. I don't think we can hear you at the moment, Elaine. So, should we come back to you, uh, Katuta? Do you want to just uh, give you give us a a, a sort of last comments and uh, um, advice to anyone listening? Uh, yeah, um, something I touched on when I was speaking but didn't uh, specifically say is definitely about mentorship. I am passionate about mentorship, even in my own role, you know, when I want to move to something different or want to do something I haven't done before, I find mentorship or finding someone I can bounce ideas off is, um, it, it, it makes a massive difference. And this program that the uh, Open University started um, is uh, really, really good. I, I wish I wish we had this when I was a student uh, with the Open University or Nottingham Trent. It saves you a very, very long journey to get to where you want to go. It's like a shortcut because you have someone who's done it before and also in that industry and the knowledge and advice they can in part is um, yeah priceless <laughs> thank you thanks very much um, see the word i was looking for it's yeah the mentoring is kind of shortcut uh yeah. to reach where, where you want to to go that's that's exactly the word <laughs> okay and for nasa do you want to give us just we got 30 seconds for a very quick <laughs> message from you Um, not sure if you can hear us there. Um, are you speaking? Um, Should we take Elaine, maybe? Yeah, Elaine. No. Oh, we can't hear okay. Elaine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I we just have I think, one minute well, left, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I just want to say to everybody, thank you so much. It's been a really, really interesting session, and despite our technical um, challenges. Um, We've all we managed most of it. Yeah, I think we're getting used to this now. This is the new mm. world, isn't it? But um, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. And everybody who's been watching, I hope you've got some inspiration from, um, from us. And if anybody wants to be in touch with any of us at the Open University, please, please do uh, look us up and uh, continue the conversation. So thank you. Thank you very much to all our speakers. Yeah excellent um uh, session and i hope everybody enjoys the rest of the day okay thanks everybody Thank bye